What a great way to end. It's been a record setting world in a couple <laughs> different ways. Uh, the draw show just about to begin. So as we head inside, I will hit you with a couple of the rules. Uh, obviously, uh, the teams will be randomly picked first from pool one and placed into the quarterfinals bracket. Nothing too crazy is going to happen there. Uh, the real fun is when we start pulling in those pool two seats in which no pool two seat can be placed on the same side of the bracket as the team that they were in the same group with. So don't worry, we'll walk you through it as it happens. We're heading inside now to take a look at how it all break down in the knockout stages. And as they start pulling the teams, I want to get you guys a general sense on the eight teams that have qualified through to the knockouts. Uh, Frosk said perhaps one of the closest and most contentious eight we've ever had. I, I think there's no clear favorite, and it does feel like everyone might be a contender. Yeah, me, I'm, I'm really excited to watch uh, Damon and Top especially, but I, I do feel like there's just so many really good teams um, at, at, at this world event, and it, I think this is going to be quarterfinals is going to be when it starts getting really exciting just because of how many top heavy teams uh th this tournament feels like it's just all really strong teams and then you know a, a handful of not so strong teams yeah and, and another thing that comes to mind are like sleeper teams in a sense like g2 Fnatic, um or even i would throw in jd teams that are on uh, uh you know pool two but for sure can ramp it up like you've seen world champion IG in 2018 is a good example of that. Even to a certain degree, an underperformer in group stage uh, in, in Fun Plus Phoenix that ended up winning the same champion. I'd love to f just point out that both Tien and Ning are the ones actually drawing in both finals MVP, so that's nice to see. That's a great, that's a great call out. Kobe? We also, we didn't have any crazy upsets. You know, all the favorites got through. Uh, there, there was no, you know, big moment where we had a downfall of one of these top teams coming from one of the top regions. Pretty much, uh, you know, the only big downfall was uh, North America not getting a, a team on through. So it, it should be, uh, like they are kind of alluding to, some really tough competition here. Uh, top and Suning on the first top. I was going to say already that is a possible semi-final matchup then. Top Esports and Suning on the same side of the bracket as we look for the final two pool one seeds to be drawn. But yeah. Raz, what's your take on that potential semi-final? That always happens. Last year it was, <laughs> it was literally FPX and IG. The semi-finals ends up being the LPL teams going up against Let's each other. So that's, that's always something to, to point out Genji, if that does something. end up happening. I want to see who they end up going up against. Well, Gen G will be the first team on the lower side of the bracket to be pulled, which means, of oh. course, that we only have one left to go. Also, I mean, LPL got three teams through, so what are you complaining about? Okay. I take what we get. Uh, that's fine. <laughs> I'm happy with that. Pretty good. If 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 uh, if everything goes correctly here, this next draw should be Dom Juan Gaming to fill out uh, the pool one seeds, and then I start to get really curious about the you know the one two matchups again. I'll remind everyone that the pool two seeds are G2, JD, Fnatic, and DRX. So are there any one two matchups that you guys are particularly hoping for? Hmm. I think Ooh. I think one one thing would be LEC's history versus the LPL. Uh, I know specifically uh, Perks gave that interview where he said they don't give uh, they don't care who, who they match up against, <laughs> but given their history, I think they might prefer you know one of the uh, uh, LCK teams rather than the LPL ones because they this current roster of G2 has only won a single game. Uh, versus an LPL team, and that was the one game versus Sooning this year that they took uh, in the group stage. Well, G2 is Ooh, the first team to go. be pulled, but here's the deal. Because Suning is in the upper bracket, G2 must go to the lower bracket. You cannot be placed on the same side as your own group opponent. So they will dodge both top and Suning, and instead get mean? placed into the first matchup in the lower bracket. Yes, Raz, tell us. <laughs> Is that Damwon? Uh -huh. Am I correct in being labeled No, 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 Damwon uh -oh. should have been the fourth team to be pulled. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, this this okay. would be a Gen G matchup. So Golden Glue, what's your oh. take there? A G2 versus wow. Gen G matchup. I, ah, that's, that's exciting. I wasn't, you know, I, I was, I think G2 definitely lucked out that they couldn't go versus top. I think that's like really good versus, I, I think this is still gonna be a really close one. That's probably, that's ex an extremely exciting game where there's obviously Jinji is coming in as a first seed into the favorites, but I, I could definitely see G2 uh, taking them out as well. 
Ooh, Fnatic, Fnatic the next to be pulled. So both Fnatic EU squads coming out hot. Of course, Gen G is on the lower side of the bracket. So Fnatic will get Fnatic slotted in right there at the top, gentlemen. Top esports. Oh my goodness. Woo, baby. Uh, send the salute out. I do I wanted I want to point out the first thing. I actually think G2 going up against Gen G, like, that's great for them. I, I would yeah. actually say that Gen G is the, the worst of the pool one seeds. Because you have top esports, Suning, Dumb One. It would be a bit of a, a, a tie for me between Suning and Gen, uh, Gen G, but I think it's a really good matchup for G2. For Fnatic, good luck, man. That, that one's <laughs> a, that's as hard as it can get. Maybe it's, that one's a tough one. Be I will to say that for G2, I feel like the, the bottom lane is going to be pretty difficult versus uh, versus Gen G. So they're, yeah. it's not like they're going to have uh, you know a, a free pass here. Yeah, yeah. JD Gaming. JD Gaming just pulled. And of course, Damwon being on the lower side does mean that JD will match up here against Su Ning. Mmm, that's There's the quarterfinals. Kill, that's yeah, that's yeah, what you don't want to see right there. Uh, <laughs> you don't want to see that. <laughs> that gives me vibes of 2014 OMG going up against EDG. You know, just team kill after team kill. That's the LPL history, my friend. That's pretty crazy. All three LPL teams in the top half. I was Insane! Say, if I recall correctly, this was the matchup that Lyric was talking about wanting to see. Uh, and so, uh, while it will be an LPL team kill, as you mentioned there, Kobe, uh, it, it is maybe something that uh, some of those uh, more hardcore LPL fans would be looking for. DRX, the final team to be pulled here. Hey, that's another team kill right there. That's Man, uh, <laughs> well, you're gonna get, you're gonna get a lot of those when there's only three yes. regions in the quarterfinals, right? You've got two, two, a two LEC and then three from each of the others, and so uh, there you have. These are some sweet matchups, but again, I think this only reinforces the point that this is one of the most competitive top eight, uh, you know, selection of worlds teams that we have had. I think that last mm -hmm. one might be the easiest to predict. Uh, with how Dom1 ran through the LCK, uh, Dom1 versus DRX, that, that has got to be the overwhelming favorite there for, for Dom1 on that bottom side. So it, I think that's the scariest draw for, for DRX, actually. Um, we'll see you know what they can show as far as evolution and what they've learned. Yeah, you know what I love to see at these times is like what all the players, the coaches, how, how they feel, you know, get their live reactions. Because you said like G2, you, you, you stated their record versus LPL teams. And then at the same time, um, I'm sure they're happy they're at the bottom of the bracket avoiding all the LPL teams. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, I, you know, it's. Uh, but I also love the mindset. I think it was, uh, I, I'm, I'm going to forget which of the G2 players it was, but in an interview said, you know, at the end of the day, we do have to get through everyone, right? So we may as well start hard, you know, get those, get those three O's out of the way and then move on and then have an easier <laughs> run at the finals. Why not? One thing to point out that I want to, that I just seeing these um, teams and these groups so far, I know we've seen LCK versus LCK finals in the past. That's no longer going to be possible. You're not going to be able to see an LCK versus LCK or an LPL versus LPL. The only real like region team kill that's possible is a G2 versus Fnatic finals. Like if that was, a, that, if that miracle run ended up happening, then that would be the only possible route for, uh, you know, a, a regional finals. Let's, uh, let's try working through, again, each of these matchups just real quickly, one at a time. First up, Top Esports versus Fnatic. Kobe? All right. This one is definitely going to be tough. Uh, I'm looking at the top lane for, for Bwipo because Bwipo is a very volatile laner. You know, he loves taking trades. He's been very outspoken about that. I think so far this tournament, he's been really good, especially with the Volley Bear into a lot of these counter picks on the top side. But top esports specialize in that. Karsa goes up there a lot. They save their counter picks for 369. So I think that is going to be a, a battle in the pick and bands and is going to determine a lot how uh, the series does go. Yeah, uh, for me, this one's a really interesting style. Like stylistically, I, people would look at each matchup and would kind of struggle to find one for Fnatic. For me, it's jungle, which is a great matchup if you're going into top esports. If you're trying to strategize how you want to be able to beat them, for me, watching top regionally, not even just this year, but like a lot of the times, the best way to be able to attack them is through Karsa. Because Karsa is a lot of the times trying to help out lanes. He's trying to go top side. He's trying to go uh, and aid mid lane. So a lot of the times he's trying to facilitate for his laners. So if you have a strategy level ones like we've been seeing from Fnatic that can uh, target Karsa so he's falling behind, then you can start picking lanes apart. This is, I think, 
I would heavily favor it towards top esports because I do have them as the tournament favorites. But I think Fnatic, that is a, an avenue they can really take versus top. Of course, uh, following that is uh, Suning versus uh, JD Gaming. So again, we've already talked about the, the LPL uh, team kill here, but Golden Glue thoughts as uh, Suning was one of the teams initially uh, coming into the tournament. We didn't have a good read on. How do you feel about them now uh, coming out as the one seed in Group A? Yeah, my eyes are definitely on Ben when I'm thinking about Suning. I think <laughs> he's a really fun player to watch, but uh, at the same time, he's had moments where he'll just, you know, run it down like three times in a row, and then he'll just like 1v9 the game. So uh, in, in that matchup, I'm going to have my eyes on this player and just see like which Ben shows up and if he's going to be uh, putting, you know, JDG in the trash bin or, you know, I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> or if he's falling in himself. Like, yeah. I think, like, been in the playoffs, this is what I love about this, because it's going to be LPL fans really trying to uh, take um, every piece of this matchup. Uh, been in the playoffs was not as good. And when I'm talking about playoffs, I mean, like, LPL playoffs was not nearly as good as been in the regular season. So, like, this is going to be a great matchup just to see how he kind of goes up against his Zoom. Because, yeah, top lane matchup for me is the most important one. Especially with how people have been talking about Suning in scrims for this whole tournament. Um, that, you know, just coming back with all these stories, it, it, it kind of feels like last year, Dom won scrim talk uh, and, and really building up this mythos around this team. Uh, that's what I really want to see come out in the best of fives for them because um, with some volatile players that they do have, you know, they have a lot of playmaking ability, uh, like Grayson's kind of alluding to, I think uh, SOFM as well uh, could be one that this is now the biggest stage for him. Style of me, let's see what the style is. Yeah, I love me some style. Gen G versus G2. Kobe, I'm coming right back to you. Raz said he thinks this is the best draw for the LEC two seed here against Gen G. Do you agree? I would agree from the performances in group stage. Um, just going matchup by matchup, like I, like I said when they're drawn, I do draw my eyes to the bottom side um, for Gen G because I think uh, Ruler for sure is going to be a big powerhouse. But I definitely agree. I, I think G2, as much as they're like, we'll fight anybody, we're going to beat everybody anyways, we're going to the top. <laughs> I feel like, you know, they're they're happy to start here. <laughs> uh, uh, Golden yeah, Glue, it's also, it's wild to me that we would say Gen G's the weakest one seed. When you look at that roster and you see people like former world champion rule, you see people like Clid and BDD still on that lineup. Yeah, I, I, that's what I love about this, like, now that we're at quarterfinals, because I'm looking at all these teams we have. I mean, yeah, Gen G versus G2, and we're saying, like, this is the best that G2, this is the easiest opponent G2 could get, right? And they're still... Uh, you know, terrifyingly good. Uh, I, I don't know. Every single game is just going to be so much fun to watch. Yeah, and I think people can make the case that Suning is like, but it's uh, we're talking about like the best that they could, the get can get because they were in the right, same they were in the same group. Well. Yeah, and totally. G2, they definitely had high variance performances where they looked insanely good in, within their group and they look very clean. Uh, I'm not even just talking about necessarily the drafts, but like a lot of their gameplay had great elements of how Mickey X was performing and how he was like his Alistar game versus Team Liquid is a great example where he set up for a long range Ash Arrow to kind of claw themselves like a little bit back into the game. And this is what you kind of expect with G2. Um, I want to see that best of five G2 that we saw in the LEC uh, playoffs and that we saw from last year that took the names off of just basically LCK team after LCK team. Yeah, just a slightly different finals this time around. Golden Glue, back to you for the final matchup. And interestingly enough, this is almost uh, uh, the antithesis to the matchup we just talked about. Dom Juan versus DRX. I think it was Kobe who said he feels this might be the most lopsided towards the one seed. How do you feel mm -hmm. about that? Uh, I would probably agree. I think Dom Juan coming into the tournament, I already had my eyes on them, and then they really showed up in, in, the, in, the, in the group stage. And I'm really looking forward to watching Showmaker. He's... Probably my favorite mid laner at the tournament. I love watching him play. Uh, and he, he has such a good time. And he's so mechanically gifted. <laughs> while also just being such a team player, right? He'll play set. He'll play Galio. But he'll play everything to the like 99.9% .9 of its capability. It's so impressive to watch. I just don't want to see another 3-0. <laughs> I, just, I just, like, personally, because we've seen this finals already <laughs> in the LCK finals. Um, what if they learned, Raz? What if they learned? <laughs> They've got to learn something. <laughs> uh, uh, going up against top esports is basically that Rocky montage 
two times in that group. You got to have learned something. Bring it going up against Dom One. There you go. Yeah, take some learnings from the group stage. We know that the World Championship is all about evolution, in particular from groups to knockouts. So many things that generally change. New meta, new picks, things like that. And so it is up to the teams to determine what those changes will be. But with our quarterfinals matchup now determined, it's time to make your quarterfinal picks for Pick'ems, powered by Alienware. In addition to the usual perfect pick prize of every ultimate skin, fans who guess every matchup correctly will also take home an exclusive Alienware Aurora Battle Station, the exact setup being used on stage at Worlds by all of our pros. Make your quarterfinal picks starting later today at 4 p.m. Pacific over at lollysports.com slash pick'em. Good luck to the few of you that are still in the running. I don't think any of us can say that we are. Right now, we're headed for a break. On the other side, though, we'll be joined by Lyric to talk about next week's matchups. Stay tuned.